like a lot of countercultural movements, like the hippie movement, like the hip hop movement in the early 80s, and the punk rock movement, they were all informed by the social, economic, political climate of the time. You know what I mean? We couldn't get, it's like Johnny Rotten sung, and you know, we really felt it. When he said no future, it really felt like we had no future. And we actually tried to get, we got proactive and tried to do something about that situation. You know, we, whether that be start a band or me starting to film or people starting to write, we, it was a proactive thing. That was the thing about punk rock. It was all, all inclusive. If you had an I idea and you had the motivation, you could be part of this shit, you know. Bob, Bob Marley, my brethren. Um, when I first met Bob, I was selling weed. And one day I'm round his yard and I've got my bondage trousers on and Bob's like, Dan lets you look like one of them nasty blood clout punk rockers that we are deal with. And I'm like, Bob, actually these people are my friends. You know, there's something going on here. Even reading the tabloid papers and the way the tabloid papers portrayed it, yeah, it did look like rubbish. But anyway, he spent like three or four months in London. This was just after he got shot. He was chilling out. And he got to find out that there was actually something going on there. It wasn't just this nihilistic viewpoint that the media portrayed. And he ended up writing Punky Reggae Party. The struggle continues. Gentlemen coming through. Ooh, yeah. The struggle continues. So late 70s London, the political, social, economic climate's pretty bad. My, my, my white mates were very pissed off. I was already pissed off because I was first generation black and British and I had plenty to be pissed off about. Fortunately for me, I had a soundtrack to ease my pain. That was reggae music. My white, white mates never had that. The popular music of the time was like stadium rock, you know, overindulgent shit with 20 minute solos. And it didn't reflect the feeling on the, on the street. So my white friends set about creating their own soundtrack of the people, for the people, by the people. That became punk rock. The initial response by the media was very negative, so they couldn't get anywhere to play. A friend of mine decided to open a dedicated punk rock venue called the Roxy. So anyway, so I'm throwing down the reggae music. They're digging the anti-establishment vibe. They're digging the bass lines. They're digging like the sound bite vocal delivery and they didn't mind the weed either you know so there's, there's this kind of cultural exchange going on you know we're kind of getting to know each other through our respective cultures and what was interesting is that we got closer not by being the same but by understanding our differences so that was a beautiful thing look at you now hey do you have anything on you hey do you have anything on you you know i mean obviously the climate of hip-hop today it's more hip-hop than hip-hop the reason it's the largest selling music on the planet is because it ain't as radical as it used to be I mean you know now we're talking about Puff Daddy instead of Chuck D or KRS-One and that's but that's the cultural climate generally it ain't just a black thing it's a white thing too it's got very conservative and very safe <laughs> 